Mount Everest, it's big, it's beautiful and it's evenly dangerous. Especially on what's called the death zone, where every step is a test of endurance. Not everyone who tries to climb Mount Everest makes back home. It's exhilarating to stand on top of the world. It was also, you know, a little bit disturbing because there, there's a body and every single person that was climbing to the summit had to climb over that deceased climber. And you realize that, you know, what happened to them could potentially happen to you. And you're in a state of survival. Good job, buddy. You did it. The person you're looking at is Eric Weinmeier. He's among the few who successfully climbed the Everest without something that most of us take for granted. The sense of sight. Eric was born with a rare eye disease called retinoschisis. Each day, he woke up with less and lesser eyesight, and by age 13, he was in complete darkness. A teen with a million dreams was now afraid of being sidelined from the race of life. His inner soul, on the other hand, refused to hold back and decided to embrace his journey. And that's when he joined the wrestling team. And the first wrestling match we all went to, uh, his mom and dad were there and I was there. And it was really very emotional. He won. And everyone in the auditorium just stood up and cheered. And just when Eric thought things were turning around to the good side, he lost his mother in a car accident. This emotional blow shattered him to the core. Losing my mom was a thousand times more painful than going blind. To cope with the pain, Eric started a new chapter in his life. He found his escape in the mountains. Eric began with small hikes and later found his love for rock climbing. Over the years, Eric mastered the use of ropes and clips and gained more and more experience in all sorts of climbing. After spending more than 15 years in climbing, he was now ready for the dream that many considered impossible. It is a two month long journey with avalanches, whiteouts and chaotic ice falls. The conditions on Everest could be the worst nightmare for any climber, especially for a blind climber. To support his climb, Eric assembled a team of highly experienced mountaineers. And after two years of well-advanced planning, Eric and his team were at the base camp. This is where the toughest part of the climb begins, the Khumbu Icefall. It is a series of jumbled ice blocks with deep deadly crevasses. Many have lost their lives here, either crushed by a huge ice block or lost forever into the crevice. To get through the Khumbu Icefall, it takes about 10 hours of crack and crossing the crevasses with the assistance of ladders and ropes. Eric took about 13 hours to complete this section. I've slowed my team down. I'm so disappointed in myself. But he was glad that he made it to Camp 1. From Camp 1 to Camp 2, the route is pretty much straightforward. But as Eric and his team moved higher, the oxygen levels gradually start to drop. By this point, Eric had to take six breaths after every single step. Approaching towards Camp 3, the going gets much tougher. Not just because of the altitude, this section of the route is tremendously difficult as it has an upward incline of almost 1500 feet, which leads to Camp 4. Now Eric has entered the land of spirits, the death zone. Life is not meant to exist here. Not even plants can live this high. Eric was now less than 3000 feet away from the finish line. But before making this historic as impossible, Eric had to overcome the final two roadblocks. The first was the glamorous knife edge, which is a 2 meter wide ridge. No matter how many perfect steps you take here, one wrong step and the gravity will not tolerate your mistake. A climber had clipped into the wrong rope and fallen to his death. It's another sad reminder that you, you just have to stay focused. The last and the final challenge was the Hillary step, a steep 40 feet climb that is technically the toughest part of the climb 
as by this point, climbers are completely exhausted and low on oxygen. It was almost after three months in the mountain. Bad weather, sickness, injury, getting pushed back by the storms. Eric and his team managed to endure all this from base camp to the top of the world. 25th May 2001 was the day Eric Weinmeier became the first ever blind person to step foot on top of Mount Everest. You did it, man. So many people doubted you. You showed them. And this was only the beginning of his incredible blind adventure. Run, 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 run. Eric redefined what it means to be blind. He simply wanted to live all those experiences that we sighted people just enjoy watching. <laughs> and yet after all this, his most dangerous feat was still in the making. Imagine you can't see and you're trying to ride an avalanche of water. And you're trying to bust through that totally chaotic environment just by the sound of your guide's voice, by the sound of the river, by what you're feeling under your boat. After training for more than six years, Eric solo kayaked the entire Grand Canyon of 277 miles, an adventure that he remarked to be the hardest and the scariest thing he's ever done. Of course, there are a lot of accomplishments, but I don't think what gets talked about enough is the struggle. Because it really has been quite a struggle to live what I call a no-barriers life. The goal is to develop systems and tools to make things possible, what others see as improbable or impossible. His mission is to inspire people with challenges, break down barriers and explore. No barriers is not just for people with physical barriers. It's about invisible barriers that we all have in the back of our minds. The motivation is what's within us is stronger than what's in our way. And live a life of purpose. It occurred to me, Bob, that one of the things that contributes to Eric's strength is the fact that he can lose as well as win. That's exactly what he says, that if he does lose, it just makes him go out and work that much harder. And, you know, you learn something from everyone you meet, and I think uh, in this case, it's that what you must accept, accept with grace, whether it's a win or a loss, and then move on. And I think that's what people like Eric are so good at teaching us.